All right, guys, I wanted to take a little bit of time today and uh, talk a little bit about a Fenestron tail rotor and how it compares to the other type, which is the conventional tail rotor. So if we look at the tail rotor on the, on the cabri here, you can see this is called a Fenestron or a ducted fan, okay? So essentially, instead of having two big blades, like I'll show you in a moment on the R44, we have seven small blades on the cabri, okay? so. The big, well, there's some big differences between the two of them. One being that uh, we have seven blades for a number of reasons. One is that we have less lift per blade, meaning we have to have more blades to create the same amount of lift. Um, the blades are much smaller, as you can see here. Um, they're created from a much more simple material. These ones are actually plastic injection molded versus a conventional tear order, which can be a composite material, much more complex procedure to make it. So the cost of this can be uh, more, less prohibitive. A um, uh, lot of different reasons why you would use one versus the other. So a convention tail, conventional tail rotor, uh, typically people like uh, the feel because you have immediate response versus a Fenestron, which takes a little bit more movement on those pedals feels, some people describe it as more mushy in the middle of the, of the control. However, if you look at the graph, you'll see that at the end of the reach, or the end of your pedal input, the amount of, the amount of uh, work that it's able to do is very similar between the two designs. The, one of the big advantages on a Fenestron tail rotor is that we have um, this duct which keeps the airflow from passing from the, the low pressure area on this side to the higher pressure area on the back side. Very much like a wing on an airplane, at the wing, at the tip of the blade, or in the case of an airplane, at the tip of the wing, you get uh, air that wants to move from the high pressure area to the low pressure area, creating wing, wing tip vortices, which is why on some aircraft, like a 737, they've added the winglets at the end, uh, which bend up and keep that air from being able to get from one side to the other. So with the Fenestron, uh, the actual shroud does that work. With the, with the close tolerance here, you can see that there's not much room, if any room, for that air to pass. So that does create the system much more efficiently, uh, moves the air um, in, in the direction of tail rotor input. All right, so that's one of the biggest advantages for sure. Um, the simplicity of the system, the efficiency of the ducted tail rotor. Um, also, inter interestingly enough, something that we don't think about is that because we have this large airfoil here, um, it's quite a wild, wide profile, and usually they have more like a wing-type profile, which actually creates lift just from the design of the, the tail assembly itself, the fin. So versus a conventional um, thin vertical uh, fin, like a 44 or Bell 206, uh, you get a lot more lift in forward flight from your Fenestron, which in essence means that when you're in forward flight, your tail rotor has to do less work, and therefore it's also more efficient in forward flight. Uh, one thing that is a disadvantage, and uh, well, two things that are disadvantage. One, people say that the pedal input feels different than what they're used to. The second thing is that uh, if we talk about uh, conventional versus Fenestron, the conventional tail rotor, because of the large size, doesn't have to spin so fast to create the same amount of lift. So usually on a conventional tail rotor, you're gonna see about a six to one ratio, meaning the, the tail rotor is spinning about six times faster than your main rotor, all right? On a Fenestron like this one, the Cabri, the tail rotor spins 10 times faster than the main rotor, okay? So what does that mean? Why does that matter? Well, it doesn't matter when your RPMs are where they're supposed to be. The time when that's gonna be a potential issue is if you have a low rotor RPM situation. For instance, if you over pitch, you know, let's say you're flying in the mountains and you run out of power at high altitudes and you start over pitching, meaning your RPM starts to decay due to not having enough power from the engine. In that situation, because you're, you have a 10 to one ratio with the, the tail rotor, you actually can get into a situation where you have less authority at that lower RPM. Okay, so you have to be very careful with the high altitude power, um, see if you can uh, maintain your rotor RPM. The other time, the other place that we see this is 
if you're doing fold down auto rotations, there's a potential for during that fold down for the RPM to decay on the main rotor, which isn't a, a big deal because you're doing an auto rotation, it, that can happen. However, with the 10 to 1 ratio, it is possible during a fold down auto rotation, if you, if you drag it out too long, RPMs get too low, that your tail rotor can also become less effective in that situation. You can actually run out of pedal. Um, so a couple things to really be aware of when you're operating any Fenestron helicopter, Cabri being one of them, there's a lot of advantages, but there is also some disadvantages that you really want to be aware of. Um, there's some good bulletins about that. Gimbal um, has a good bulletin talking about that Fenestron, um, the, the non-linear uh, Fenestron. Uh, Eurocopter also talks about it, so um, lots of good information to read about them, but um, we love the Fenestron, um, but we have to be careful that we, uh, we don't assume it's always going to be the same as a conventional. Um, we'll look at the R44 and we'll look at how it's a little bit different. Alright, so here we have a Robinson R44 tail rotor, and as you can see, um, obviously it is much bigger. So each blade individually is um, significantly larger than the Fenestron we were looking at. Um, this tail rotor has some of the same aerodynamic principles as you'd see on a main rotor on the R44 Bell 206. So it is a teetering uh, tail rotor, so that it does make it a semi-rigid, meaning that you have uh, some of the aerodynamic principles that we talk about on a main rotor, advancing and retreating blade uh, tip stall. We have um, the, the differential lift between the advancing and retreating blade, which has to be compensated for on a main rotor by what? Flapping of the, of the blade up and down, right? So the 44, you can see, the blades can flap back and forth, much like a conventional main rotor would on a semi-rigid rotor system. They also, if you look at it, uh, will see that it changes pitch as it flaps, so that the advancing blade will actually decrease pitch, and the retreating blade will actually increase pitch to equalize that lift across both blades. And this is why we don't have to have the system like the R44 has on the main rotor, with the, uh, the blades being positioned below the pivot point of the main rotor hub. So uh, if you look down the core of the blade here, you'll see that as the advancing blade, which is this one here, um, creates more lift, it moves inward, okay? As it moves inward, you'll see that it's going to change pitch and it's going to decrease the angle of attack. I don't know if you can see that, but it actually decreases the pitch as it moves inwards. At the same time, the upper blade is going to increase pitch because it is retreating at this moment. Therefore, it equalizes throughout its rotation, equalizes the lift between the advancing and the retreating blade. This is one of the uh, things you require on a two-blade system, very much like you'd require on the main rotor of any helicopter. So a couple other very distinct advantages of the Fenestron tail rotor is that, number one, uh, because it's enclosed, we don't have some of the issues we have with a conventional tail rotor where if we get into a confined area and we have bushes, maybe a rock we don't see or something, the Fenestron being enclosed is protected by the shroud versus a conventional tail rotor um, on some aircraft is quite low and quite easy to uh, hit, hit an obstacle on the ground. Um, another one is, um, unfortunately, people, even though they're briefed about tail rotors and not walking to the back of helicopters, people still do happen to manage to get themselves in a situation where they walk into a tail rotor on a conventional helicopter. Um, this can't, really can't happen in a finish run because you'd have to really have to try hard to, to get yourself into the tail rotor. So um, one big safety reason, one uh, large reason would be just for uh, protecting the tail rotor itself. Um, so often aircraft that are doing HEMA's work, um, search and rescue, medevac, that kind of thing, where they're loading passengers in the back of the helicopter, uh, find it very uh, big safety advantage to have in the tail rotor uh, enclosed like this one. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope that it somehow informed you, taught you something. Um, if you are enjoying this content and would love to support us, I would love to see a thumbs up, uh, subscribe and uh, see more content that's coming down the road. I'm going to start putting out more of these kind of educational videos 
I'm trying to break it down a little bit so that everybody can understand the basic principles of the helicopter. So uh, thanks for uh, watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.